International Ovarian Tumor Analysis, that is IOTA criteria. Very important it is. The content is what is the ultrasound reports, what is the IOTA, what the IOTA rules can't do, what is the analysis criteria, what are the benign features, malignant features, rules, IOTA group and conclusion. The term definition and measurement to describe the sonographic features of the annexing tumor a consensus opinion by the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis, that is IOTA, I-O-T-A group, which is being uh, formed in 2000. And this is a simple rules were developed by clinicians and statisticians from the IOTA group. The rules based on the ultrasound data from 1066 women recruited at the nine centers in five countries, Italy, Belgium, Sweden, France, and UK. All patients included required surgery as judged by the local clinicians. The parameters used in the simple rules are based on the terms, definitions as published by IOTA group. That is, these are the ultrasound OBGYN in 2000. This is old one. And this had to let further studies, including rockets. That is R-O-C-K-E-T-S. This means refining ovarian cancer test accuracy. And that course is ongoing. So IOTA group being formed and these are the simple rules who are developed. So the international ovarian tumor analysis criteria of IOTA is that's a pre-operative classification of ovarian tumors consisting of five features typical for the benign tumors that we, we call it B features. Then five features typical for the malignant tumors that are called M features and inconclusive that no features apply or both B and M. And the features are not being applied. So research is ongoing. It's a simple ultrasound rules to distinguish between the benign and malignant annexal masses before surgery and prospective validation by IOTA. This is a, a very important by BMJ. And what is already known on this topic, preoperative characterization of annexal tumors that determines the management of the patient as well as appropriate management determines the prognosis. And then it's a subjective assessment of the ultrasound examination, which is most reliable method to distinguish between the benign and the malignant, malignant masses before surgery. But it needs expertise. It's not like that a routine sonologist should do all this, but it definitely required a very, very expertise thing. The simple rules have been proposed to discriminate between the benign and the malignant masses. But again, they require external validation. Now, what these studies add into, they had added simple rules were conclusive about 75% of the annexal masses. They could apply the simple rules when conclusive and performed as a subjective assessment and by experienced uh, examiner for the discrimination between the benign and the malignant masses. But the use may change the clinical practice by providing the accurate instant classification of the most of the annexal masses while reducing the number of patients that need to refer to the expert scanning. That's very, very important. And this manuscript describing the simple rules is published in ultrasound in OBGYN is a Timmerman et al. in 2008. Now, what are the simple rules and that we can't do? The simple rules cannot replace training and experience in ultrasonography. The simple rules cannot compensate for the poor quality of ultrasound equipment. So very, very important too and very simple ultrasound rules. We have a normal ovary, functional cyst, benign tumor, borderline tumor, and invasive tumors. And ultrasound reports categorizing the annexal masses helps the patient for the referral pathways and helps to reduce the unnecessary patient anxiety. So right from normal ovary to invasive tumor and ultrasound reports characterizes the, all the annexal masses. Now, what are the benign features in a sonographic report? As per IOTA, simple rule, these are the benign features. First, using IOTA mass is classified as benign if at least one B feature is present and no M feature is M features are present. So, first is unilocular cyst. You can see a cyst which is nothing is simple on unilocular cyst, that is a B1. And the presence of solid component small component with a larger diameter, less than seven millimeter, that's a B2. Then B3 is a presence of acoustic shadows. You cannot see the transparent fluid over there and a presence of acoustic shadows, that's a B3. 
Then V4 is a small multilocular tumor with largest diameter more than 100, uh, less than 100 mm. And V5 is no blood flow. The color score is over there, one. And that's a no, if the color doctor over there and there is no blood flow. So these are the benign features. It's right from B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. They are there. Now the malignant features, again, as per report of the IOTA, simple rules. These are the malignant features. Using IOTA rules, mass is classified as malignant if at least one M feature is present and no B features are present. So on a, another important point. So M1 is irregular solid tumor. M2, the presence of ascites all around. Number three, M3 is at least four papillary structures. One, two, three, four irregular structures into the mass. And then M4 is irregular multilocular solid tumor with the largest diameter is more than 100 mm. That's another important point. And the last is when the blood flow is there, the very strong blood flow is there. So it's M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5, these are there. Now, these are the classification of the molecular calcium. M1 is a regular solid tumor. M2 is the presence of ascites. M3 is a four papillary structures. M4 is a regular multilocular solid tumor with the largest diameter more than 100. M5 is a high Doppler blood flow, color score four. And when benign, we can have the unilocular presence of solid component, which is largest component is less than seven. B3 is a presence of acoustic shadows, but it's not worrisome and B4 is a small multilocular tumor with the biggest diameter more than or less than 100 and B5 is no blood flow is important. So once the ultrasound examination is being done, the IOTA score, we can find it out by B rules and by M rules. If B rules, it's a benign cyst, follow up is needed. With IOTA, if there are B rules also and M rules also, so unable to classify, then MNEX model is there, malignancy risk less than 10%, and malignancy risk more than 10%. Malignancy risk less than 10%, surgery is the treatment. But if the malignancy risk is more than 10%, work up the extension and surgery in oncologic reference centers. And if there are M rules, high risk of malignancy, again, this is also important. Now, three rules are there. Rule number one is two, one or more M features are present in the absence one or two, one or uh, one or more M features are present in the absence of B features. The mass is classified as a malignant. Number two rule is is like one or more B features are present in the absence of M feature. The mass is classified as benign. But if both M features and B features are present, B feature are present are present the inconclusive or the second test second stage test is recommended. These are the three simple rules to be followed. Thank you so much for the patient listening. Keep on, keep on uh, learning from 100 presentations. Learn simply. Thank you.